Hey everybody, today we're in Camden, South Carolina and we are at the Revolutionary War Visitor Center. It's a beautiful place inside. It's only been open, what, maybe a year or so mm -hmm. now? So we came last year, we truly enjoyed it. The mannequins look lifelike. So we're gonna head back in and see what we can see today. And then we'll go somewhere else. Are you ready? Ready. I'm Let's ready to, let's not forget. Let's go. Let's go pretty. Yeah. I think these are Boykin Spaniels, which is the state dog of South Carolina. They are absolutely precious. So this over here shows you have the market building, which was a meeting space, the public house, which has the exhibit entrance and gift shop, and Liberty Hall, which has the restrooms, offices, and meeting space. So that's this Revolutionary War Visitor Center, Camden, South Carolina, with gratitude to Senator Vincent A. Shaheen for his years of service to this community and for his appreciation, protection, and promotion of the history and heritage of our community and state. Through his efforts, the Revolutionary War Visitor Center at Camden is now a reality. And that was August 13, 2021. love that light fixture up there. I bet you if they really have a party going, they open up these doors. Mm -hmm. That says the city of Camden, South Carolina, the Revolutionary War Visitor Center at Camden, August 13, 2021. So obviously that is the day they opened. So we're gonna say they've been open a year and a half. Yeah. So this talks about Baron Johan de Kalb. And it talks about his conduct at the Battle of Camden, South Carolina on August 16th, 1780 was one of the outstanding feats of sheer bravery during the American Revolution. His powerful physique towered over his outnumbered continental troops as he led them forward against the British line only to receive 11 wounds that would slowly drain his life away until his death in Camden three agonizing days later on August 19th. And they have a sculpture of him over there. So that says Major General Johan de Kalb, sacred to the memory of Baron de Kalb, Knight of the Royal Order of Military Merit, Brigadier of the Armies of France, and Major General in the service of the United States of America. He gave a last and glorious proof of his attachment to the liberties of mankind and the cause of America in the action near Camden in the state of South Carolina on the 16th of August, 1780, while leading the troops of Maryland and Delaware and animating them by his example to deeds of valor. And that was a proclamation of the United States Congress, October 14, 1780. And that down there is not of the French Royal Order of Military Merit, Brigadier of the Armies of France. And that says, born Huttendorf, Bavaria, June 29, 1721, married Anna Elizabeth Emily Van Rebase, Major General, Continental Army, died Camden, August 19, 1780, at age of 59. And that's the Freemason symbol. So that says, the protection of the country greatly depends upon a superior cavalry. And that was in Green, 1781 in February. During the American Revolution, as in many other aspects of life, horses were irreplaceable assets to the soldiers and civilians who depended on the horse for transportation and farming. Although General Washington originally thought that the horse cavalry would not be useful for the Continentals, he soon realized just how important the horse would be to the cause. At the start of the war, the British ordered two cavalry regiments 
to the American colonies and raised two legions in America. The Americans established four regiments of dragoons and six partisan corps or legions. During the Southern Campaign, both armies quickly learned that the horses would be key to their efforts providing tactical information as shock troops as a means of transportation over long distances and for a quick escape when necessary. So this one says the horse is our great safeguard. And that was by Ian Green, March of 1781. Horses were used by militia, regular cavalry, artillery, and supply units. When the horses that pulled artillery died during battle, the artillery itself might be lost. When horses suffered from hunger and exhaustion, wagons full of supplies might have to be abandoned. When a soldier's horse suffered wounds or died in a fight, the rider could suffer the same fate. Whether a strong draft horse, a sturdy farm cob, or a well-bred hunter, these war horses were essential to the final American victory. So this out here shows where this is at. You see the sign out there at the road. And then you have this. You guys can make yourself at home. And if you have any questions, I'll just give me a yell. All right. We'll do that. That's those arrowheads, right? Mm -hmm. The arrowheads. Mm -hmm. We used to find them in that place where we lived when yeah. we was growing up. Didn't know it was going to be that far. I know. <laughs> She spoke, O oh, excellent Lord, with very sincere and open goodwill, I offer you my person, my lands, my vassals, and his poor service. From around her neck, she drew a long string of pearl beads and threw it about the neck of the governor, exchanging with him many gracious words of affection and courtesy. All of the men were of the opinion that they would settle in that land, as it was an excellent region. Since the governor's purpose was to seek another treasure, like that of the Lord of Peru, he had no wish to content himself with good land or with pearls. Instead, the governor set out from Cofidacheki and took the Cosica along with him, not giving her such good treatment she deserved for the goodwill she had shown him. We traversed her lands for hundreds of leagues, in which, as we saw, she was very well obeyed. Along that way, the Kasika of Kofetacheki stepped outside from the road and went into the wood, saying that she had to attend to her necessities. Thus she deceived them, and hid herself in the woods, and although they sought her, she could not be found. The Kasika came from the town in a carrying chair. On arrival, she spoke, O oh, excellent lord, with very sincere and open goodwill, I offer you my person my lands, my vassals, and his poor service. From around her neck, she drew a long string of pearl beads and threw it about the neck of the governor, exchanging with him many gracious words of affection and courtesy. All of the men were of the opinion that they would settle in that land, as it was an excellent region. Since the governor's purpose was to seek another treasure, like that of the Lord of Peru, he had no wish to content himself with good land or with pearls. Instead, the governor set out from Kofidacheki and took the Kosika along with him, not giving her such good treatment she deserved for the goodwill she had shown him. We traversed her lands for hundreds of leagues, in which, as we saw, she was very well obeyed. Along that way, the Kosika of Kofidacheki stepped outside from the road, and went into the wood, saying that she had to attend to her necessities. Thus she deceived them, 
and hid herself in the woods, and although they sought her, she could not be found. The Corsica came from the town in a carrying chair. On arrival, she spoke, O oh, excellent lord, with very sincere and open goodwill, I offer you my person, my lands, my vassals, and this poor service. From around her neck, she drew a long string of pearl beads and threw it about the neck of the governor, exchanging with him many gracious words of affection and courtesy. All of the men were of the opinion that they would settle in that land, as it was an excellent region. Since the governor's purpose was to seek another treasure, like that of the Lord of Peru, he had no wish to content himself with good land or with pearls. Instead, the governor set out from Cofidacheki and took the Cosica along with him, not giving her such good treatment she deserved for the good will she had shown him. We traversed her lands for hundreds of leagues. Friends, the European inhabitants of this province are, for the most part, people of sobriety and industry, which, together with the advantage of the climate, enable them to live in great affluence of most things necessary for life. I may venture to say that this country is much better in health than any other English colony on the continent of America. The proportion to the length of time and stock of English money originally mm -hmm. expended in settling it, no people are more hospitable, generous, and willing to do good offices to strangers. He was born in Drayton Hall, so we've definitely been there.
General Cornwallis to Sir Henry Clinton, June 30, 1780. I shall take liberty of giving my opinion with respect to the practicality and the probable effect of further operations in this quarter. I think that with the force at present under my command, I can leave South Carolina in security and march about the beginning of September into the back of North Carolina, with the greatest probability of reducing that province to its duty. If this be accomplished, I am of the opinion that it would prove an effectual barrier for South Carolina and Georgia, and could be kept with the assistance of our friends there. Liberty song. Come join hand in hand, brave Americans all, and rouse your bold hearts to fair liberty's call. No tear from your sacks shall suppress your just claim, or stain with dishonor America's name. In freedom we're born, in freedom we'll live. Persons are ready, steady boys, steady. Not as slaves, but as free men, our money will give. Chester. Let tyrants shake their iron bars, and slavery clank the galling chain.
Memphis says it was more like a Civil War. Things looked bleak for the Patriots in the summer of 1780. They lost their army at Charleston and Francis Marion had barely escaped the city. Joseph Kershaw was in prison. Andrew Pickens was paroled to his home and Thomas Sumter was recuperating. Governor Rutledge was in exile and the British were making inroads throughout the state. In August, the American army suffered another overwhelming defeat. Lord Cornwallis convinced his southern strategy was working in South Carolina, was subdued, headed to North Carolina. Oh, that is cute. I can see it means my dear daughter. I... Yeah, but, you know, if you're trying to figure out what they're saying. There's the Battle of Musgrove Mill.
You know, we've been to most of these places. Uh -huh. We've been to most of these places. We've been to Cow Pens. We've been to. Uh -huh. I said we've been to Cow Pens. We've been to Fort Watson. We've been to Musgrave Mill. We've been to a lot of these places. Kings Mountain. Now we do have to go here. We haven't been here yet. Fort over along that set on Old Santee Canal now. So you can visit that now. In the Utah Springs. And then the Biggin Church. And then the Fort Dorchester. Yeah, it's Two to one against, but our mind keen as blades. Oh, till they come within six paces. Then choose your man, fire, and bear next to rest. We'll strike before fever takes us. We'll strike. 
line of four feet that takes us. The Battle of Camden is nearer than you think. The Rebels, two to one against, but our minds keen as blades. Picture it as bad as you possibly can, and it will not be as bad as it really is. I'm three years a soldier. These miserable militia in front reigns and stop. Barely fit to slaughter. No man fakes. Just move to kill them before they kill us. My baby forgets. Not me. Hold till they come within six paces. Then choose your man, fire, and bayonet the rest. So if you do visit here, they also have public restrooms and they are some of the cleanest restrooms we have ever been in. And they're like right whenever you come out to the visitor center over there. And of course I had to buy something. I always like to support the places whenever they offer free admission. Now, if you want a tour back there where they have the houses and all that, you got to pay a separate fee for that. That's another location. Look at the little dog right there. He's so cute. I didn't even see that one a while ago. Maybe he's trying to get over there with the rest of his family. He's a baby. A lost little baby. So you might be wondering what I bought. Well, I love a good clearance sale. These socks were only five dollars. Probably good to wear in the winter time. Cause right now I have to wear the low cut ones. And I got these also. I got horses on them. I guess that's where the Carolina cup. And yeah, they had a lot of um, marked down hats in there about the Carolina cup. And this says race day. This is a bourbon, tobacco, and vanilla candle and it's made by barrel down south and it was also half price I love good half price so. <laughs> so this is how it looks it smells delightful mm. I can't really smell tobacco in there this maybe if you heat it up, it might smell like a tobacco field. I don't know. You, you can smell it. Just a little. Smell it. Well, we guess it'll be the same. See what we go through. Can <laughs> you smell it there? Do you remember what tobacco smells yes, like? Yes, I remember what tobacco smells like. Get me over there at the um, farm in Conway. It's like a blast back to the past. So I might get mom to drive down the road to see if we can see one other thing. Don't necessarily mean we're gonna walk today, but I wanna see if we can find where it's at. So we're going in pursuit of the Camden Battlefield as soon as we leave here, so. Are you ready? Yes, she's like, she said earlier, she's like, not today I won't, but we're gonna see. <laughs> so let's see if we can find this battlefield. It's this while ago, but they have up there on that signpost how far away it is to each place where I guess battles took place side because I see Fort Watson, Fort Mott, Utah Springs, Charleston, Georgetown. I have to remember to come and look at that deeper the next time I come. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Musgrove Mill, 96. at the roads as I was pointing out earlier that's how it looks from this direction. 
Okay, so now we're about 15 minutes up the road from the Revolutionary War Visitor Center we were at. So now we're at the Camden Battlefield. So I'm gonna go around and show a little bit of it because as you can see, there's pine trees everywhere. So if there's pine trees, I'm sure there's rattlesnakes around. So we're not walk this on a hot day like today but I'll show you a little bit of it so if y'all are ready I'm ready so I'm gonna start walking because the gnats are bad too so but it's a beautiful sign out here so this is the road we just came down as you can see you got the pine trees everywhere we got this beautiful fence line here and right here it says Revolutionary War Patriots. This marker commemorates the men and women who achieved American independence. These patriots believing in the noble cause of liberty fought valiantly to found a new nation from 1775 to 1783. And that was presented by the South Carolina Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution in honor of the 250th anniversary of the United States. And then you come here and it's got the sign I was just in front of. South Carolina Battle of Camden near here on August 16, 1780 an American army under General Gates was defeated by British forces commanded by Lord Corn Cornwallis. Major General Baron de Cobb was mortally wounded in this battle. So British troops engaged Tarleton's Legion 23rd 33rd and 71st regiments volunteers of Ireland Royal Artillery Four Light infantry companies, rural North American militia, volunteer militia, and pioneers. The American troops engaged were Armand's Legion, 1st and 2nd Maryland Brigade, Delaware Regiment, 1st Artillery Regiment, Porterfield's Light Infantry, North Carolina Militia, and Virginia Militia. And that was erected by the Kershaw County Historical Society in seven, 1974, replacing a marker that was here since 1954. So this marker right here lets you know that Camden Battlefield has been designated a National Historic Landmark. And this site possesses national significance in commemorating the history of the United States of America. 1961 National Park Service, United States Department of the Interior. And so this right here lets you know that you're on the Liberty Trail. And it says Battle of Camden. August 16th, 1780, the Battle of Camden fought on August 16th, 1780 was a brutal contest between troops commanded by British Lieutenant General Charles Lord Cornwallis and Patriot Major General Horatio Gates. While a crushing defeat for the Patriots, it resulted in the appointment of Major General Nathaniel Green to replace Gates as commander of the Southern Department. Green would play a critical role in the Carolinas directing operations that eventually led to the American victory. This portion of the Camden Battlefield has been preserved with a grant from the South Carolina Conservation Bank and federal funds from the American Battlefield Protection Program administered by the National Park Service. Preservation of this property is in partnership with Ker Kershaw County and the Catawba Valley Land Trust. It's over here at this kiosk. It says, welcome to the Camden Battlefield. So, it says if you desire to. When you walk along the Longleaf Pines at Camden Battlefield, imagine thousands of British and Patriot troops converging here in the early hours of August 16th, 1780, and the dense smoke of their artillery at dawn. The fight raged on either side of what is now Flat Rock Road. Try to envision that dark day of defeat in the struggle for American independence. Listen to the voices of Camden audio experience located nearby to hear the poignant stories of some who fought on this ground. So that's a map of the area.
So this says, walking in the footsteps, the Battle of Camden, August 16th, 1780. The Battle of Camden fought on these grounds on August 16th, 1780. There was a brutal contest between troops commanded by British Lieutenant General Charles Lord Cornwallis and Patriot Major General Horatio Yates. It was a crushing defeat for the Patriots. As you explore these pine groves, imagine that summer day centuries ago when thousands of soldiers struggled on this sandy soil. What drew the British and Patriots to this place? The town of Camden, located about eight miles south of here, was at a major crossroads connecting Charleston and the coast with the South Carolina interior. After the fall of Charleston to the British on May 12, 1780, royal forces used Camden as a supply and intelligence center as well as a garrison for active troops. Gates tasked with regaining the South for the Patriots learned that there was a potentially vulnerable British outpost at Camden and mobilized his 3,400 mini well, man army. Cornwallis, hearing that Gates was moving toward Camden, led his 2,230 forces to stop the Patriot threat. The two armies unexpectedly collided on what is now Flat Rock Road on August 16th at 2.30 a.m. and engaged in a brief skirmish. The fight resulted in an earnest just before dawn on August 16th. Oh, that was resumed with an artillery duel. The commanders then formed their yeah, formed their men for battle. In keeping with military tradition, Gates positioned his seasoned veterans on his right and inexperienced militia on his left. Cornwallis did the same. His honored troops were on his right facing the greenest Patriot troops. Gates badly miscalculated the ability of his men. As the British advanced with bayonets fixed, the Patriot militia panicked and ran north. Gates abandoned the fight and followed them. Patriot General Johann de Kalb remained on the field and tried to stem the tide, but in the chaos of combat, he was mortally wounded and fell in these woods. Cornwallis reported British casualties as 68 killed, 245 wounded, and 11 missing. On the American side, there was approximately 250 killed, 800 wounded, and as many as 1,300 captured. Gates abandoned his troops. The American defeat at Camden killed confidence in his leadership and dashed American hopes of regaining the South. That changed when Major General Nathaniel Green arrived to take command of the Southern Department in December 1780. Together with local militia troops, Green's army slowly won back South Carolina from the British. So, if your heart would desire to do any of the Liberty Trail, this is a map right here that tells you where all of it's at. Now, we have been to a few of these. I realized that whenever we were at the other place we were at. A while ago. And it says... The efforts to preserve the Camden battlefield were initiated by the Hobkirk Hill chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution in the early 20th century. And I guess this is where they usually have their stuff. But of course, people put trash in it. That's a nice little house there. So if you would desire, you could walk the battlefield. But I don't think that would be a good idea today. Maybe whenever it's cold. But this is where it all happened at. And this says the armies marched to Camden. So here just in case you did not know, this is Major General Horatio Gates, and this is Lieutenant General George, not George, Charles Lord Cornwallis. I was thinking about George Washington. So, that is who they are. So, now you have some faces to the names. So, now we know who the men are. And so, also, just in the event you are interested, this QR code right here will let you interact with the trails and you could go on. So, as you can see over here, this right here, that takes you down and they got more kiosks down that way. And you know, that probably wouldn't be all that bad to walk, but it is hot outside today. And I know it was even hotter whenever they were out here many, many years ago. So, I could see how far this one is, and then I'll turn around because we did see another thing. 
I don't know if you're watching the video. You're like, you know what? You are the most undecided person I have ever seen in my life. Well, that probably is true. But that's just how I am. But I can guarantee I'm not going to walk back here where those pine trees are at. Not today. Okay, this one says the road to battle. See that flat depression in the ground? That's the surviving imprint of the Great Wagon Road, a route used by thousands of settlers from the 1740s to the early 1800s. The road began in Philadelphia carrying Quakers, Germans, Scott, Irish, and Moravins westward and then down the Shenandoah Valley and across North Carolina. In South Carolina, it divided into an eastern fort that passed through Camden and a western fort that continued into Georgia. It was interstate highway of its day, and in August 1780, the Great Wagon Road led to the battle as two armies unwittingly converged here on a moonlit night. And it says, during the Revolution, this area was piney woods, generally free of underbrush, which allowed the infantry and cavalry to march along the tall, longleaf pines. And it says, a century before the Oregon Trail carried Americans westward, the Great Wagon Road led the way to expanded settlement across the southern frontier. The road began as a Native American trading route. Locally, it is known as the Catawba Path. So that is so interesting. I'm glad I walked down here now because I had no clue of that. So just in case you're watching, sometimes it does good to walk. Okay, so now we're out here where if you would have kept on walking from that park that was down the road, this is where it would bring you to. So this says Battle of Camden National Historic Landmark. And they got a thing out here. And then they got some more things back there in the woods you can read. However, we'll just have to make do with what we got today. So this one says, shots in the dark under a full moon in the dead of the night. The advance guards of the two armies came upon each other on the great wagon road. Britain's Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton, marching from Camden with his dragoons, promptly charged the American cavalry of Colonel Charge Armand. Although they routed Marne's troops, troops, the British were so driven back by fire from American light and infantry under Lieutenant Colonel Charles Porterfield, Virginia, and John Armstrong from North Carolina. Tarleton then called up the infantry and drove back the Americans mortally wounded Porterfield. Reluctant to continue battling in darkness, both armies halted and prepared for combat at dawn. Awaiting daybreak, General Horatio Gates assembled his officers. To his astonishment, newly captured redcoats revealed that he faced Cornwallis and 2,000 well-trained British troops. As options were desperately considered, Virginia's Brigadier General Edward Stevens concluded, gentlemen, is it not too late now to do anything but fight? And this over here shows all the different little things where the people were located at. So as you can see over here, you got the Battle of Camden thing like we read up the road. And then you've got all these information boards near the woods. And then you got the path that you can walk. I will see what this thing says. And then I think I'll wrap this one up. Might have to come back in the winter. And this lets you know that this is the Great Road Trail. And that's the voices of Camden. So that's what you heard back there at the other place whenever I was pressing the button. But just look at all those pine trees. And can you imagine it was the August heat? And we know how hot it gets in the south. It had to be awful and brutal and 
Oh, I'm so glad I did not live back then. But I can appreciate their efforts. But I'm glad I live in the 21st century with air conditioning and electricity. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the video for the Revolutionary War Visitor Center and also the Camden Battlefield. I know that's located in Camden, South Carolina. So how'd you enjoy it, Mom? It was good, it was very interesting. I found out that you can't say you were something, something or another Indian. It's where you was located at, and that's what you was called. Yes, you found that out at the visitor center. They had the Santee Indians, the yeah, Little PD, Cherokee, Catawba. sure anybody in there can answer a question you have so I did ask her were you able to go to the battlefield she said yes you can so that little QR code if you remember earlier in the video whenever I was still in the Revolutionary War Center and I was pressing that button that little QR code that would take you to a website and you could listen to the whole story on your way to the battlefield now I did not do that because I was listening to music but we found the battlefield I don't know I probably would really enjoy that whenever it's cold outside because it is 91 degrees today and it is May 9th, 2023 at the recording of this. So that's already a little hot, but I try to show you as much as I could. So hopefully if you like battlefields and all that stuff, maybe you enjoyed what you did get to see and maybe it makes you want to come out here and look at it too. So that's going to do it for this one. We hope you enjoyed this little look back in history and actually getting to walk on the land where some battles were fought. Oh yeah, that was interesting about that road. That was like the modern day interstate because it connected all the way from, what I say, Philadelphia, yeah. Pennsylvania, all the way down into Georgia. I believe that's what it said. So that was really interesting to find out that we were actually able there to walk on a piece of history. Who would have known? Because there's actually a place in McClellanville, South Carolina, where you can actually still drive on the original Highway 17. So we're gonna have to do that one day whenever it's um, dry outside because that is a dirt road. But that's also interesting. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share if you would like to. And most importantly, please subscribe if you have not done so already because I enjoy seeing the subscribers go up. But if it doesn't, that's okay too because as we all know I'm still going to travel and I'm still going to do this regardless. So that's it for this one. So as always, toodaloo!